How do we fight and struggle such that we are in the very terms of our action, producing a different world and not reproducing their world of violence? We rely on the law to protect us. We are also subject to the same law that will attack us, which means that our sense <clears throat> of what our rights should be, <clears throat> our sense of what should be a constitutional right, um, exists sometimes outside the law, even in a sphere that the law calls criminal. Now, this is a crazy world, right? Where those who seek to exercise their rights are criminalized. Those who seek to demand justice are considered to be terrorist or they're considered to be anti-government or a threat to the nation, right? And of course, black women have always been a threat to the nation because the idea of the nation has always been a white one. And it's always had a very narrow idea of who belongs here, who belongs in Brazil, who's entitled to education, who's entitled to a home, to housing rights, who's entitled to vote, who's entitled to uh, a decent wage. And so all of these questions, um, I think, pertain to the, to the idea of what kind of nation is this? How does it imagine itself? And we know that under Bolsonaro, but before Bolsonaro on the right and after Bolsonaro, we must remember, there will always be, oh, I hope not always, but there is such a strong white supremacist assumption in Brazil. So when we think, well, who threatens the nation? It is certainly black women, it's especially trans, black women and men uh, who are subject to violence, exclusion, poverty, um, lack of access to housing, to healthcare, to literacy, um, but also um, uh, the sex workers upon which the white men depend, <laughs> who, who, who have no decent wage or sometimes no wage at all, who look for protection or access to healthcare or to a living wage, um, whose exploitation is well known. And, you know, it tells us something uh, about what our communities have to be. We have to know what justice is when the law does not embody justice. We have to know what justice is when the law is actually actively destroying, seeking to destroy the very idea of justice. And when, as, Pre as Preta says, uh, the law becomes an instrument of death, right? The law is an instrument of murder. It's an instrument of abandonment and also an instrument of death and murder. So at that point, uh, the law and the government becomes a kind of killing machine. And uh, we have to find the modes of resistance that not only expose that perverse logic, that perverse operation of the law, but reimagine the world uh, in a different way. Reimagine a world in which equality uh, and justice would be paramount, but also where everyone would have an equal right to health, health, to education, to a livable wage, um, to respect and dignity and protection against violence, whether it's violence from the state or from non-state actors who are able to act the way they do because the state looks the other way, right? They have the tacit approval of the state, it may not be state actors, but the state's looking the other way, allows the non-state actor to kill. So that's why we have these horrible um, uh, numbers of femicides, of the killing of trans people, of travesty, um, uh, of sex workers, of migrants. So I want to say perhaps one other thing to add to this, which is um, capitalism. Like, where is that in this picture? 
Well, one thing I think we can say is um, that when Bolsonaro says, oh, the, 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 the virus is not so bad, uh, we can all open the markets, we can all go into the streets, we can all go back to the factories. Um, what he is saying is that the profit that Brazil can make from open markets is more important than the protection of human lives because he knows that those who are most affected by COVID are those with no access to homes. As Preta says, you can't stay inside or go home if you do not have a home. And if the system of finance is such that evictions are happening at ever higher rates because nobody has a wage and there is no guaranteed wage for the people, right? If we had a guaranteed wage, if everybody knew, oh, the state will support me even when I lose my job, when there's a pandemic and no one can work, the state will give me what I need to live. No, the state will not give you what you need to live because that's socialism. I don't know, <laughs> socialism. if it's socialism, bring it on, I say, but this specter, you know, it's Castro, Castro's at the door, you know, like, oh, enough. Um, but listen, I, I just want to say this, this one point, which is that there is a calculation. How many people will die? How much profit can we make? If we have open markets, um, we will make more of a profit than if we close them. Brazil will lose its standing as an international trade partner it will not accumulate wealth. What this government is saying is that, yes, we accept that people will die, but the people who die are workers who can be replaced. The people who die are the homeless and the poor, and they don't count. They're not productive workers, right? And that means that an entire part of the population is targeted for death. And capitalism is, I believe, a death-driven machine. Right. There's a kind of death drive that belongs to capitalism. It is always sacrificing human lives for the purposes of its own expansion, its profit, and its accumulation of, um, of value. So one question is, how do we think the value of human life outside of the framework of market values? And this strikes me as an important question. It's also I believe one reason why um, feminism has, yes, not only to be fundamentally anti-racist, uh, by which I mean there is no feminism without the opposition to racism, because feminism uh, is fundamentally tied to black feminism. There is no feminism without black feminism, right? If feminism is just representing women unmarked on, without any reference to their racial or colonial constitution, then it is a feminism for white women. And that is not okay. We don't add race later. Similarly, I think that feminism has to be a, a theory and practice of solidarity, that it's not about just one identity or we're feminists, that's our identity. It's like, no, no, feminism means we are committed to a broad solidarity, that we understand the exploitations of workers, of the homeless, of those who have no access to education. We, are, we, we have a fundamental solidarity with trans activists and travesti and sex workers. And it also means, of course, that it is um, both local, acting locally and acting trans regionally and transnationally. So maybe we can talk about some of these um, issues. It's a, extremely important, I think, during these times when the attacks on feminism are rising, not just in Brazil, it, where there's the fabulous, ironic attack on gender, <laughs> but uh, throughout uh, the world in Eastern Europe and uh, um, in parts of Africa and in the United States, in, in France, in Switzerland, the, the attack on gender, the attack on feminism, the effort to take it out of universities and to, to undermine its political claims um, 
are, are enormous. And they're enormous because they see the progress we have made. They see that we are powerful. They see how many women flood the streets as they fight against sexual violence. They see how powerful and contagious our political commitments can be, which is why they try to stop us with the violence that they do. And my own view is that we fight them. Yes, I love the what Preta says, we fight or we die, right? It's fight or death. But I, my question is, how do we fight? We do fight. How do we struggle? We must struggle. How do we fight and struggle such that we are in the very terms of our action, producing a different world and not reproducing their world of violence? And my belief is that the most fundamentally important uh, movements of our time, and that includes um, Black Lives Matter and its intersection with feminism and queer and trans rights, we are radically nonviolent. But that does not mean we don't fight. We fight. We fight nonviolently. And we don't fight the same way they fight, because we don't want to reproduce their violence. We are fighting against their violence. And that means that that is our task and that's our struggle um, as we move forward. And we are, by the way, moving forward. There's no doubt in my mind. 